Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. Thursday, and all of today's guests, including Elliot Friedman, standing by, are brought to you by the Vancouver Giants. The uh, Giants look to even up their series against Everett in Game 4 tomorrow at the LEC Puck Drop is at 7 p.m. We didn't talk about it in the first segment. Giants losing oh, 3-1 yeah. to Everett last night uh, at the LEC. Grab your tickets now at VancouverGiants.com slash tickets. Joining us now from Hockey Night in Canada and the 32 po- Thoughts podcast, Elliot Freeman. Elliot, thanks for doing this, sir. Looking you good? cold, Donnie? How are you? Yes, I, I, I do. I think I got it from Rick. Uh, no, no, no. I'm... I'm feeling good i'm sucking it <laughs> up though right okay uh the canucks beat the coyotes 2-1 quinn hughes yep. leading all nhl defensemen in points he's plus uh 39 w- where, where does he stand as far as you're you're concerned when it comes to the norris trophy uh, for me right now um i don't know that i have a vote this year so i, I don't know if it really matters what? but uh uh but um uh, he would be number one on my ballot uh, right now. And uh, I I just think from beginning to end of the year, uh, the, the role he plays on the Canucks, um, the expectation of where the Canucks were supposed to be at the start of this year, uh, it's going to be tough. Like, Makar is having a monster year, and Yossi is really having mm-hmm. a monster year. He's really come on in the last few months. But, you know, one of the things I always try to do is just avoid recency bias. Uh, for me, recency bias can be a really powerful thing. Whoever seems to come on late is the person uh, I know yeah. in the past I've always given a lot more power to. But I, I try to dial that back. And if you go back to game number one, I think the most consistent defenseman for uh, the since the game one to now has been Hughes. And uh, I think also the fact that he's a bit of a smaller guy, I mm. think that also plays a bit of a role into it. Um, I, I think he's had a marvelous season. As we sit here on April the 4th, he's my guy. Elliot Friedman doesn't have a vote? What's going you'd on? Be, you'd be number one on my, on no, my list. This, this is this is my doing as much as oh. anything else. Uh, so uh, I, I, I don't know that anybody should get any criticism for it. We'll see how it all works out. Oh, okay. so the Oilers uh, uh, last night... I guess you could say blowing it because we spent a lot of yesterday's show talking about how they were just five points behind the Canucks, now seven, because they lost 5 nothing to the Stars. Stars have won yeah. a franchise record eight straight games going back to the old Minnesota days. What are you seeing from that team? Uh, well, I think they're the best team in the league, to be honest, if the goaltender is is on. And to, to me, 1-20 to 20 or 1-23 to 23 or whatever numbers mm-hmm. you want to pick, I think Dallas is the deepest team in the league. And the issue is has been at this a lot of this year, Ottinger hasn't been very good. Now he's starting to heat up. He got the shutout last night. He's won a few games. As long as it's not a blip and it's for real, I think Dallas is the team to beat. But um I, I really like them. I, I look at their lineup, I, I don't see a weakness. Now there's a lot of things that can go sideways, injuries, like I said, goaltending. We all know how big goaltending is in the playoffs. But all things being equal, I, I really love them. And uh, I mean, I was—I got home in time to watch that one last night. I was flying home from Winnipeg, and it was—it was a spanking. There's no question about that. And I'm always surprised when when a good team gets spanked like that. But I, I think Dallas is really good, and it doesn't surprise me that they could do that to people. Elliot, uh, back to the Canucks. Demko, Lindholm injuries. Uh, you've been all over this uh, from day one. Any update on both those guys? Demko, I was under the impression like he can come off the uh, the Saturday on Saturday, right? So, like, I, I believe that this has always been a plan that they looked at this and they said we have runway and we're going to take advantage of it. Um, you know, Silovs gave you a win the other night, so that that's big. It gives you some breathing room. Uh, I I always believed their plan was to get him two or three games right before the playoffs. And as far as I know, they are on track to do that, and there's no reason to worry. Uh, Lynn Holm, as you know, uh, has been a little more difficult to pin down. Um, We knew that there was an issue. We knew that he was going to go see someone for it. I'm not surprised he's missing time. I will say this. I had heard a rumor that he might not play the rest of the regular season. 
but I had multiple people tell me that that is not that that uh, that you shouldn't go with that. So I what it says to me is that it's still kind of in flux, and everybody's trying to figure out uh, exactly what the story is with them. Um, I think, look, like I said, same thing with Demco. Like you guys are in a good place. You don't need to rush anything. Yeah. Um, and so I don't necessarily think there's a rush here, but as of the last time I looked into it, which was at the beginning of this week, it had kind of been indicated to me that it was still unknown, but not to assume the worst case scenario. Okay, Elliot, uh, still in Vancouver, you know, uh, we love talking about uh, contracts coming up. <laughs> it's it's a beautiful thing. Um, Heronic, uh, Joshua's name's coming up. Uh, he has put himself in a position, Elliot, uh, yep. to to really get a significant raise here. Um, you know, it seems like every guy that's up for a contract, Elliot, in Vancouver, is, is looking at a pretty significant raise. They are, and on one hand, that's a good thing because you've got a chance to win because guys are playing well. Yes. Look, Rick, you have, you have to prioritize. Now, I saw an interview with uh, Patrick Alvine. I can't remember who did it, but he said that it's unlikely we're going to sign anyone now unless we get a, a, a contract off or a, an agreement that we can't turn down. So I think we'll kind of see how these things play out. Um, you know, one of the things that – uh, I really think that teams look at is fit. I think in a, in a case like Bluger, uh, I think he really recognizes he's been around. He recognizes the fit. I think Joshua, uh, I think he recognizes the fit and the coach in particular, although it's probably his biggest chance to hit it big. So that will be a factor here. Um, you know, I, I think Ronick, like I've always said, I think there's a deal to be made here. Uh, I, I really do believe that. It's probably not as high as some people would like it to be. Um, I would say about that, Rick, but I still think there is a deal to be made there. And that's what I think the goal is here is to get a deal done. I just don't know if it's going to be as high as uh, some people would like it to be. And, you know, one thing we've seen here is that the Canucks, if they feel it's getting to a place where they've got to know an answer, as we saw with Pedersen, They'll just say, look, here's we need to know the answer. But that time isn't now. Now it's all about the playoffs. It's about eliminating the noise. They can deal all this stuff after the season. Yes. This got a whole lot of attention, Elliot. Wednesday's line brawl at Madison Square Garden, Rangers and Devils, good or bad thing for the NHL? I, I don't have a problem with it. I, I don't. Um, look, I, I think we the, the fighting is way down in this league, Donnie. Um, uh, you know, I, there was a spike earlier this year, but when you go back to the times we all grew up watching it, it's, <laughs> it's very different. We don't have specialized enforcers anymore. Um, everybody's got to play. I don't think there's going to be people who leave the league anymore with the fight cards of a, of a tie Domi anymore. I, I think those days are over. Um, you know, once in a while, I don't have a problem with it. I, I have to say... I think everybody knew that Rempy McDermott fight was going to happen. I'm not convinced everybody thought it was going to be all 10 guys because I'm not sure that the Rangers would have had knowing that uh, how many people could get thrown out of the game for it because they declare one fight and the secondary fights, people are all goners. Um, you know, I'm not sure the Rangers would have had Miller and Truba out there. And I'm not sure the Devils would have had John Marino out there, but yeah. it was it was a wild scene. There weren't too many people turning off their televisions and or sitting down last night while all this was going on. Yeah, and, and as opposed to back in the day, they do keep their helmets on, which with uh, uh, Chris Simon, etc., in in mind, yeah. uh, it's not the be all and end all. I understand, but it is different, and maybe if you want to call it this, safer than it was uh, back in the day. Hey, well, well, I just think I just think Donnie that we don't like. I I, I, I want to say this lightly because yes, the I Simon agree. family yep. going through a lot. We just don't have those players anymore. Mm. Um, nobody's. I don't know how many fights that Chris Simon had in his career, um, but I don't think you're going to see players like that anymore. And Chris Simon was a good hockey player. He could yep. he could really play in a 29 goal season. Yeah. Just the amount of fights he had. Uh, those days are over, and they aren't happening at the junior level either, which I think is even more important. Could you argue that Matt Rempe is one of those players? You know, I, I, the, the thing I would say about Rempe is, Don, is that, um, you know, he never fought in junior like a lot of the like a lot of the enforcers. Like, you guys grew up at a time, and I did too, in the Western Hockey League, 
you look at the Western Hockey League stats every year in the Hockey News Annual, and they had 15 guys who had 500 penalty minutes. Mm. Um, you know, you guys remember the heyday of the new Westminster Bruins and what they were like. Um, there aren't players like that anymore. Like, if you take a look at Matt Rempe's penalty minute totals in Seattle, he never had 100 penalty minutes in a season. Mm. And so, and I think one of the concerns was when this started happening, Don, is that he didn't know how to protect himself. He didn't know how to fight. He was leaning with his face. And I think that's one of the reasons the Rangers dialed him back for a little bit and he didn't fight in the last game with New Jersey is because they're like, this is too much too fast. And, you know, Ramp is getting a reputation. He's fighting a little bit here and there. But I, I still don't think we're ever going to see him or anyone else have the kind of career that, like, a Ty Domi had. I just think mm -hmm. those days uh, are over. We know too much about the damage it creates. And so I, I just don't think it's one One-offs, I don't think too many people have a problem with it. But players fighting 25 or 50 times a year, yeah, th those days aren't going to be happening anymore. If I had a vote for talk show hit of the year, you'd be my choice, uh, Elliot. That was outstanding. Oh, we thank you so great much. Great stuff. Great stuff. <laughs> I'm coming next week. I, I'm hoping to be in studio, guys. On yes. Tuesday morning. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Let's you, get her done. Let's we'll, get her done. We'll clean it up for you, Elliot. All right? <laughs> Not necessary. Okay. Take care, guys. Thanks, my friend. Bye.